Petroleum refining has evolved continuously in response to changing consumer demand for better and different products. The original requirement was to produce kerosene as a cheaper and better source of light than whale oil. The development of the internal combustion engine led to the production of gasoline and diesel fuels. The evolution of the airplane created a need first for high-octane aviation gasoline and then for jet fuel, a sophisticated form of the original product, kerosene. Present-day refineries produce a variety of products, including many required as feedstock for the petrochemical industry. Distillation Processes The first refinery opened in 1861 produced kerosene by simple atmospheric distillation. Its byproducts included tar and naphtha. It was soon discovered that high-quality lubricating oils could be produced by distilling petroleum under vacuum. However, for the next 30 years, kerosene was the product consumers wanted. Two significant events changed this situation. One, invention of the electric light decreased the demand for kerosene, and two, invention of the internal combustion engine created a demand for diesel fuel and gasoline. Naphtha. Thermal cracking processes. With the advent of mass production and World War I, the number of gasoline-powered vehicles increased dramatically and the demand for gasoline grew accordingly. However, distillation processes produced only a certain amount of gasoline from crude oil. In 1913, the thermal cracking process was developed, which subjected heavy fuels to both pressure and intense heat, physically breaking the large molecules into smaller ones to produce additional gasoline and distillate fuels. Viz breaking, another form of thermal cracking, was developed in the late 1930s to produce more desirable and valuable products. Catalytic processes. Higher compression gasoline engines required higher octane gasoline with better anti-knock characteristics. The introduction of catalytic cracking and polymerization processes in the mid to late 1930s met the demand by providing improved gasoline yields and higher octane numbers. Alkylation, another catalytic process developed in the early 1940s, produced more high-octane aviation gasoline and petrochemical feedstock for explosives and synthetic rubber. Subsequently, catalytic isomerization was developed to convert hydrocarbons to produce increased quantities of alkylation feedstock. Improved catalysts and process methods such as hydrocracking and reforming were developed throughout the 1960s to increase gasoline yields and improve anti-knock characteristics. These catalytic processes also produced hydrocarbon molecules with a double bond, alkenes, and formed the basis of the modern petrochemical industry. Treatment processes. Throughout the history of refining, Various treatment methods have been used to remove non-hydrocarbons, impurities, and other constituents that adversely affect the properties of finished products or reduce the efficiency of the conversion processes. Treating can involve chemical reaction and or physical separation. Typical examples of treating are chemical sweetening, acid treating, clay contacting, caustic washing, hydro-treating, drying, solvent extraction, and solvent dewaxing. Sweetening compounds and acids desulfurize crude oil before processing and treat products during and after processing. Following the Second World War, various reforming processes improved gasoline quality and yield and produced higher quality products. Some of these involved the use of catalysts and or hydrogen to change molecules and remove sulfur. A number of the more commonly used treating and reforming processes are described in this chapter of the course. According to the Department of Energy, there are only 176 operating petroleum refineries with a total crude oil distillation capacity of approximately 15 million barrels per day. Large, integrated companies with multiple high-capacity refining facilities own most of the U.S. crude oil distillation capacity. The small refineries with capacities below 50,000 barrels per day have only 14% of the total crude distillation capacity and play a significant role in the industry.